Good day, students. So welcome to our review series to help you ace your calculus um, AP exam. Uh, in this installment, we're going to be going over the solutions to the 2014 free response question for number six. And this question addresses uh, differential equations, slope fields, linearization, and also approximation with the linearization function that um, you, kept, you come up with. Do not forget to visit our website, michaelstrip.com under AP Calculus to get the collection of all the um, AP exam review materials that we have. All right, let's take a look at the A part for question number six. Question six reads, consider the differential equation dy dx equals three minus y cosine x. Let y equals fx be the particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition f of zero equals one. The function f is defined for all real numbers. Part A. A, a portion of the slope field of the differential equation is given below. Sketch the solution curve through the point 0, 1. So the, um, sketching the solution curve is um, a very straightforward process. All you have to do is follow the pattern of the slope field in such a way that you intersect that point. So step number one is to graph the point, the initial condition 0, 1, so 0 on the x, y, uh, 1 on the y, so 0, 1, that's point zero, 1. Also pay close attention to the scaling since you have 1, 2, 3, as 3, then every tick mark is 1. So there goes the point. So you just basically draw a point following the pattern of the slope field. Um, so let's go ahead and draw it so it looks something like this, just following the slope field. Something like that. And then uh, the other one goes something like this. Basically following the pattern of the slope field, something like that. And then it curves up. Okay? So that's basically how the solution looks like. So just make sure it goes through the point 0, 1. And you're following the general pattern of of the slope field, okay? This part doesn't look too smooth, so let me smoothen it out a little bit. So you have the line going like this, the slope field, and then it curves up like that. So you're just trying to stay within, um, within the slope field. If you touch it, that's fine, but just giving you a general idea as a sketch. It's not a perfect graph. It's just a general idea of um, what the solution looks like, all right? So um, this is the answer to uh, part A. All right, let's take a look at problem, the B part. B part has two parts to it. We have to write the equation for the line tangents to the curve, to the solution curve in part A at a point 0, 0,1. And then use the equation of the um, use the equation to approximate f of 0 0.2. So we're basically finding the linearization and then using that to carry out a linear approximation. All right. So to write out the equation of the tangent line, we're going to make use of a basic formula we learned in Algebra 2 and Algebra 1 also, the point slope form of the equation of a line, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. All right. We know that x1 is 0, as indicated here. y1 is 1. And we need the slope m. All right, we don't know what that is. Um, the slope at a point is, is exactly the same thing as the derivative at that point. So the slope at point 0, 1 is the same thing as dy dx, the instantaneous rate of change at the same point 0, 1. OK? And from the original problem, we know what dy dx is. Let me write it up here. Um, in the problem, dy dx is equal to 3 minus y times cosine x. OK, so how are we going to apply this differential equation to this um, situation right here? All we will simply do is substitute 0 for the x's and one for the y in this differential equation. So we are going to have um, parentheses three minus one 
cosine, cosine zero. Three minus one is two. Cosine zero is what? So if you remember, you are a cosine curve. Let's do a real quick sketch. Um, it starts from the maximum. At zero is at the maximum, right? And then it has this nice little pattern. Um, so cosine zero is basically one. It's at its maximum. Okay, so you have two times one. And your slope is two. So m is equal to two. Now we have everything we have. We need to write the equation of the tangent line. So we have y minus y1, y1 is 1, equals the slope m, 2 times x minus x1, which is 0. OK, if we want to put this um, in uh, slope-intercept form, we just get y by itself. It helps us um, carry out the linear approximation if we get y by itself or write it in uh, slope intercept form. So we add 1 to both sides. If we distribute 2, we have 2x plus 1. Alright, so this is uh, the equation of the tangent line. Alright, um, let's put a note here, equation of tangent line. Line through um, the point uh, 0 comma 1. Now let's uh, do the second part of part B, which is to carry out the approximation. So um, f of 0 0.2 um, is basically approx can be approximated by this function, evaluating this function at um, x equals 0 0.2. Okay? So is approximately y evaluated at 0 0.2. So that's basically what you get when you plug in 0 0.2 into this um, equation of our tangent line. So we have 2 times 0 0.2 plus 1. Okay, multiply it out, you have 0 0.4 plus 1, which is equal to 1.4. All right, let me box my answer, and then we can move on to the last part. That's it. Okay. All right, part C, this is the one that normally carries the most amount of points, involves us solving um, an initial value problem um, of an ordinary differential equation. So let's go ahead and uh, find uh, y equals x, the particular solution to the differential equation with the initial condition f of 0 equals 1. All right, so let's go ahead and write down the, the differential equation. We have dy dx equals um, 3 minus y cosine x. So we're going to solve this by separation of variables. Um, we're going to collect all the y's on the left side and all the x's on the right side. All right, so um, to do that, we'll simply um, multiply both sides by dx over <clears throat> 3 minus y. Okay, so multiply both sides by dx over 3 minus y. And then um, these cancel out. And these cancel out. And you'll, you'll be left with um, 1 over, if I switch this around, you have negative y plus 3 dy equals cosine x dx, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides of the equation. So you find an indefinite integral here and here. Um, so to integrate the left side, you have to be really careful. Um, even the right side also with the sine. So let's go over a formula real quick. The integral of one over <coughs> ax plus b this is an integration shortcut. You can use u substitution by all means, but if you want to go fast, you have to remember that if you're integrating something of this nature, your integral, your antiderivative will be um, the natural logarithm of the denominator. You can do this only if your denominator has a degree of one. Uh, ax, let me just do ax um, plus b, ax plus b, and with the u substitution, you have to multiply this expression by 1 over a, whatever the coefficient of a is, okay? So if you apply that idea to this situation, 
you're going to have the natural logarithm of the absolute value of negative y plus 3 times negative uh, times 1 over negative 1 because that is a coefficient of y. You see this negative right here? It's kind of like a trap. You know, most people will forget this minus piece here. They just say, it's, oh, there's a natural logarithm of 3 minus y or negative y plus 3, which is incorrect. So don't forget, anytime you have this set up, whatever the coefficient of the first degree variable is, you have to divide the entire expression by that as indicated in this formula. All right? And another common mistake that people make is messing up the signs when you're integrating or differentiating sine and cosine. So the antiderivative of cosine, let me say sine x. I'll ask myself, when I differentiate sine, do I get, does the sine change? The answer is no. So the antiderivative of um, cosine is positive sine because when you differentiate sine, you get positive cosine. Okay, so that plus c. Now this C is composite, is a combination of the C from here and the C from there. We just added them together to form one constant, okay? All right, I mean, we just combined them together to form one constant. Now we have negative natural logarithm of um, negative y plus 3. You can write that as 3 minus y if you want. Sine x plus C. Now, this is a nice place to find the value of c. So what I'm going to do, remember the initial condition is f of 0 equals 1. Remember f of x equals y. So basically, this is telling us that x is 0 and y is 1. That's the whole idea here. So set x to 0 and y to 1 and find, then find C, okay? Then find C. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have negative natural logarithm of the absolute value of negative one plus three equals sine of zero, which is the value of X plus C. Uh, let's see what happens here. Uh, we have negative natural logarithm of two is equal to sine of 0 is 0, 0 plus c. So this follows that c is equal to negative natural logarithm of 2. All right, so we're going to plug in this value of c into this equation right here. So let's go ahead and do something. I'm going to call this equation number 1. So what we're about to do now is we're going to um, make a substitution. We're going to substitute, substitute, um, substitute negative ln2 for c in equation 1. So we'll have um, negative natural logarithm of the absolute value of negative y plus 3 is equal to sine x. Um, minus the natural logarithm of 2. All right, so next we multiply both sides by negative 1. If we multiply both sides by negative 1, we'll have the natural logarithm of the absolute value of negative y plus 3 equals negative sine x plus the natural logarithm of 2. All right. Now, to get rid of the natural logarithm, we'll use the inverse operation, which is e, we exponentiate both sides. Using e as the basis of exponentiation, we have e to the ln of the absolute value of negative y plus 3 equals e to the negative sine x plus the natural logarithm of 2. Okay, now this e and this ln uh, cancel each other out since your inverse is. So we have the absolute value of negative y plus 3 equals, now um, remember your properties of exponents. If you have the product of two exponents with the same base, what do you do with the power? So you have a to the x times a to the y. What do you do? You add the powers, e to the x plus y, right? So if you have a, um, a base with a sum of powers, you can do the reverse. You can split it into two identical bases, 
and the atoms you have here will be the powers of the two identical bases you have, right? So you have this base right here, and you have a sum of two terms in the powers, so you can split it up, basically. You can have e to the negative sign x times e to the ln of 2. We're doing the reverse of the product property of exponents, so that's what you have. Now, another thing you want to note is that when you're close to um, the point zero 0,1 on the graph, what you notice is that um, this value is going to be positive, okay? It's not going to be negative, it's going to be positive. So this absolute value can either take a negative sign or a positive sign, but close to, uh, close, let's write that down, close to the point zero 0,1, the absolute value of negative y plus 3 is going to be um, equal to y, negative y plus 3, because this is basically greater than 0. Okay, um, so we just keep that in mind. <clears throat> now that gives us the ability to drop the absolute value bars here. So we have negative y plus 3 is equal to e to the negative sign x. Now what is the e to the ln 2? These are inverses that cancel each other out. So it's just uh, e to the sine x times 2. Okay, and then we can subtract three from both sides, so we have negative y equals, and then we have two e to the negative sign x minus three, and then multiply both sides by negative one, and we have y equals negative two e to the negative sign x plus three. Okay, so this is the particular solution to your uh, differential equation with the initial uh, condition f of zero equals 1. Okay? So that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. And do subscribe to our channel for updates to other great clips such as this. And do post a comment to let us know what you think about this uh, clip. We appreciate it. Feel free to share with your friends. And also visit matgutserve.com for other great clips such as this. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.